Hey gents, today I want to talk polos, how and when to wear them, how they should fit, and some of the best brands to check out and value. It's not a complete roundup, it's more like my sunglass video. It's like, here's my collection of polos, because like currently my collection is missing some major ones, like J. Crew or Brooks Brothers and Nike, but I've had them in the past. But I did videos like several years ago where showing you know the, some of the best value and quality was coming out of the D2C brands, not the old ones. And there's a whole lecture I could do on why the $40 polo from Nike at Macy's isn't the same as what it used to be or, or the current brands. And so I just wanna talk about polos and I'll put links below so you can check them all out. Some of those uh, are affiliates and support the channel. Uh, but I just wanna say like basically what is the price that you'll pay for a good polo. But first I wanted to give like a really helpful tip that I don't think most guys know is grab yours or your partner's straightener and if you want to fix the collar you can try and iron it and the iron usually do okay but if you want to get like a, a nice crease and really fix the collar on here if you grab a straightener and just kind of heat it up and, and bring it around the collar on here that's a really easy way to get some nice stiff fixed collars especially after you know if you have a pk polo that kind of gets you know washed and then starts to curl up and everything straightener guys try it out i'll get into each of the individual brands in my collection but i'll give you some overall views first if you want a well-made good looking polo that's going to outlast like the 20 dollars fast fashion polos you're looking at about 60 dollars per polo and i think i'm going to do a separate video on how to like build a collection of polos today we'll talk about brands and you can't talk about polos without talking about lacoste also, the Gentleman's Gazette does an excellent video on the history of polos and how they came to be. You know, Lacoste started out as professional tennis gear and has now moved in and permeated all these brands. So you can't ignore the OG. But when you talk about traditional brands losing their quality, Lacoste is a good example of that. Lacoste PK cotton used to have a little bit better garment weight to it. Some they were made in Italy and stuff. And so if you're looking for like a great polo, you can buy these in almost any channel, any size. They have, I think, extra extra small up to 5x which is incredible they have petite models so the cost you really can't ignore if you want like lacoste style either without the logo but you want that classic pk somebody that's doing like the best job at that is everlane everlane comes in at 35 dollars i have this kind of like retro inspired look one but they have plain colors as well and i would put this you know in a blind test of PK, fit, like everything else, I'd put the Everlane up against Lacoste and Lacoste one is almost double the price, uh, you know, in more in some cases. If you're just looking for a classic PK polo, Everlane is a great one. Although if you want kind of the classic Lacoste feel like higher quality garment and everything, somebody who's really doing that well is Spoke. Spoke has 30 sizes, so they have the, the second most amount of sizes out of all the brands that I have here. But just like the garment weight on the PK on this is so sturdy that it's going to last through many washes, it's going to look good and drape really well, and it actually comes in at $10 less than like Lacoste's normal price. So you can buy Lacoste, you know, on discount and that sort of thing. But if you want like that classic heavyweight, really nice PK, Spoke is doing it really well. And then kind of between those two, if you're looking for a logo-less PK polo that is just really well made, also look at Kent Wang. So this kind of bridges the gap between the Spoke and the Everlane, but they have a lot of colors. They have long sleeve, they have short sleeve, and they're mostly done in slim. So I wear a small slim in this and that fits me pretty well, but they definitely run slightly small. And then the other option you can go, and I haven't had a ton of luck with this, is made to measure. So there's Luxire that does uh, polos made to measure. I have two from Lignetti, which are all made in Italy of you know pretty nice PK cotton. Now these are $115, and so you're kind of paying for the Italian premium, and also because it's made to measure, but it will fit really well. I also have a couple of polos from Bonobos. They have nice sizing, you know, small to XL, but they also have slim and standard, which is nice. That's one of the things I really like about either the made to measure or spoke or Bonobos is not like you get your small, medium, large, but you can get like a standard cut or a slim cut. Cause if you know, polos are a casual shirt, but it's still nice if they're form fitting. And so I like Bonobos in the classic style and those, um, I think you can get them down to $44 when you buy them in bundles or the regular price is very fair as well. So that's like your classic PK style. Every guy should have a PK polo in their collection. But if you're not really set on the PK style, you can go into something that's like a little bit more uh, like a Marled or a Terry. And I really like Public Rec. Public Rec has a performance polo. This is their go-to polo. And it's made of a super soft, like Jersey cotton. It's performance, moisture wicking. And it's just like a really subtle, nice polo. And their Public Rec ones have the tensile cotton, which I really like from like my rib tees and things. That's why it's kind of stretchy, really soft, uh, performs really well. And at $68, I think this is like 
that really nice spot where you're gonna get a great polo, great price, it's gonna last for a very long time. And then if you want, you know, if you're in, still in that space, I, one of my favorites has become cricket shirts. I was very put off by cricket shirts when I first found out about them because they're like 80 to 90 dollars. But then after wearing them, it's like, oh, this is why it's 80 to 90 dollars. They use a super soft organic cotton, which I really like. They have this very pronounced and distinguished polo style. So it's, it's like very casual, they have the pockets. Uh, but the the fabric itself is so soft, and these have gone. Th the, both of these polos have gone through a dozen washes at least. But a real key to this, and and this is one of the things that drives me crazy about PK polos, is the collars are super sturdy. Not only do they stand up really well, but they actually have collar stays in here. And very few polos that I come across have collar stays in this like really nicely structured collar. And so you get you know you get the four buttons right here, uh, super soft jersey cotton really into cricket, and that's why, you know, I think they're like $89 for some of them, or $79. My other favorite is I have the Mack Welder Vesper Polo, and the Vesper Polo I unboxed almost three years ago on the channel, it's held up really well, the pocket's still really strong, very good performance, but they put out this dry knit one, and the dry knit I like even more than the other. So it has a similar, like very pronounced structured collar as the Cricut, but these come in at $58, and it has this proprietary dry cotton uh, of like cotton corporation, and uh, just a couple of like really classic ones, but super soft, great performance, washes really well, so I really like the Mack Weldon one. So I basically stepped you up in price at each of these, and this is where you start to get into performance polos, and so this is like golf polos, things you can wear to the office that are really comfortable, really soft. And this was my one of my first ones, so back when I was wearing like the Under Armour and the Nike polos, Mizzen and Maine put out one of their polos. So this polo is almost four years old, uh, washes really well, very comfortable, still performs, you know, moisture wicking, very cool and all that. But they've updated their, uh, this is basically gone exclusively to the Phil Mickelson line of shirts. They have gone away from their US manufacturing. These are made in India. Some of their other lines are changing on there. But what you get with performance polos, which is really nice, are a couple of unique details like this and my Vineyard Vines polo have UPF 30 plus. So you're getting kind of like a sunscreen built in, which is really nice. And they're definitely the most moisture wicking to get sweat off of you and make keep you really cool. And the Phil Mickelson ones come in in several different colors, 88% polyester, 12% spandex. And so you're getting like, you know, a nice polo in here. And I find that the fit's pretty, it's a, it's a very athletic fit. And they have the small through X, double XL. The other one I really like, and I talked about this in my last video, is the four laps polo. The four laps polo has 37 7.5 technology in it, which I've seen at Banana Republic uh, as well. And so it's like scientifically proven to keep your body cooler. And it also has a little bit of wool mixed into the fabric, which is really nice because it helps being antimicrobial and keeping you cool. Some of the performance polos that have too much synthetic fabrics will maintain a smell and even like cotton. It's like if you wash it out, you'll still smell some body odor in there. But the fact that this has that 37.5 technology and the wool built in really helps to reduce the smell. And I have a workout shirt that I really love from them. And then I also really like Bluff Works. So this is the Pitten Polo. This comes in at that $68 price. So you're getting a performance polo without like the performance premium necessarily. And what I like about it is it kind of looks like PK, but it is 100% polyester and it's, you know, odor control, moisture wicking, really easy to wash, anti-wrinkle. And also when we're talking about the sizes of the polos, they have small, small, medium, large, like your standard sizes. They have slim and standard cut, but then they also have tall cuts which is really nice. So they have like a classic and a tall cut. And like for me, sizing is a big one and, and trying to help you guys find the right one. And so Bluff Works, I've worn this many times and I think it's one of the, the best performance polos that I have uh, in the collection here. Well, well, I was trying to give you an, an overview before I got into all the brands, but I kind of talked about all the brands. Uh, a couple, you know, I have a few other polos that aren't in here that I just don't think are worth talking about. And I will say too, one of the things that happened with Lignetti is when I ordered, the shoulders came kind of tweaked and Lignetti does have a tailoring credit. So I took it to a tailor to get fixed. It cost $15, which was covered by them. But I ordered a second polo because the tailor said she thought that it happened because the, the fabric was pulled while it was being sewed. But the second one came with that same issue. And so uh, I'm still working on getting the custom polo thing to work out correctly. Uh, I do have distilled, and I get a lot of questions about distilled. I have one of their polos. Like the fit is kind of odd in the neck and they're expensive for what they are, um, especially compared to Lacoste and some of these other ones. So distilled, man. And basically every conversation comes back to Uniqlo. I have their Aerism uh, polo and it is 
you know, that's the Arizm fabric, but it has a lot of nylon in it, and something about nylon, like, when I touch it, it just doesn't feel great, and I never find that nylon performs as well as something like spandex or some of the polyester. And so, yes, this is, like, the, the cheapest one in the bunch, but it just goes to prove that, like, the cheapest is not always the best. And so, yes, I have the Uniqlo one. Not totally impressed with it. Uh, they actually don't have that many like sizes and styles listed online right now either. They do. This is one of the few brands that go down to extra extra small, which is nice, um, and it holds up well over washing. But I just some, I can't get over the fabric for some reason. It's the same thing with their their Kando pants. It's like I can feel that it's built to hit a really low price point, and I think that if you just go up, like if you go to the Everlane Polo, I think the Everlane Polo is a better buy than this at thirty five dollars, and so. That is my take on those. So there you have it, gents. Wanted to give you a rundown of some polos, give you some recommendations if you're out shopping for polos. I, I wanted this video out in June, but you know the best time to buy spring and summer clothes is at the end of spring and summer, so it's like the only silver lining I can see in putting this video out so late, but I wanted to, to share. And so if you have any questions, have an answer down below, and as always, I'll be over on uh, Instagram and Twitter if you wanna reach out to me over there. Love to hear from you guys. Until next time, gents, this is The Cavalier. Thank you.